Hey everybody, we're going to talk forces. Uh, so force is basically a push or a pull. Either uh, you're pushing away or you're pulling towards, uh, and that goes for any source of force. So whatever the source of the force, uh, it's either going to push away from that source or pull towards the source. Either way, a force is a push or a pull. So forces, just like position, displacement, and velocity, are vectors. Forces are vector values. And forces have a magnitude and a direction. And if you think about it, if you apply a force to something, um, you could apply that force in any particular direction. Uh, and you could apply either a little bit or a lot of force or anywhere in between. So knowing how much force, the strength of the force, and in which direction really is pretty important when talking about forces. There are different ways to show or write forces. Um, so again, forces are vectors. They have a magnitude or a strength of the force and a direction. So which way is the force being applied? We can uh, simply state uh, information about the force. So in terms of magnitude, we could say it's a weak force or a strong force or a large force or a small force. Uh, in terms of direction, we could say left or right, up, down, east, west, anything that indicates a direction. So I could say, oh, I'm applying uh, upward force to the ceiling or a rightward force to the box. Uh, or in the example here, a weak force in the leftward direction tells me both the magnitude of the force and the direction of the force. It's a weak force in the leftward direction. I can also use arrows, and this is very common, and we will get into diagramming these later. Um, but when you use arrows, the length of the arrow indicates how strong, or it indicates the magnitude of the force. So a shorter arrow means a weaker force, and a longer arrow means a stronger force. And of course, the direction is indicated based on where is the arrow pointing. So in our examples here, uh, this shorter arrow shows a weak force in the rightward direction. And this longer arrow shows a strong force in the rightward direction. And of course, you can turn the arrows in any which direction you want to indicate a different direction. There's also the mathematical approach to writing forces. Uh, so we would show the magnitude as a numerical value, and that is measured in a unit called newtons. Uh, so forces, uh, when we're referring to forces, we'll say 5 newtons or 3 newtons or 1 newton. Uh, newton the newton is a unit of force. Uh, for direction, we use the plus and minus symbols like we have been doing with other vector values. Uh, and the plus and minus uh, meanings will be determined by whoever is setting up the reference frame. So, you know, plus might mean up or right, forward, away. Plus could be down. Uh, negative might be down, left, backwards, towards, uh, up even. It all depends on who sets up the frame, so that will be specified. Uh, so for an example, you know, we can indicate a force of 3 newtons in the rightward direction by simply writing a positive 3 newtons. And we could indicate a force of 6 newtons in the leftward direction by writing negative 6 newtons. So again, using the sign uh, positive or negative indicates our direction. The number value tells us how strong the force is. And of course, forces are measured in the unit newtons. So where do forces come from exactly? Uh, forces are the result of two objects interacting. So for example, when you open a door, you're either pushing or pulling on the door. That push or pull is the result of you interacting with the door. So there are two objects there. There's you and there's the door and there is a resulting force. And the door is actually pushing back on you, but we'll get into that later. Uh, another example would be you sitting on a chair. So there's two objects there, you and the chair. And so there's a force of you sitting on the chair. You're pushing on the chair. And again, the chair is pushing back, but we'll get into that interaction later on. Now, there can be more objects involved in a scenario, of course. I mean, you know, if you're sitting in a chair, you're maybe resting on the desk as well. And so there could be many objects in a system. But if we look at specific forces, they will always go back to only two objects interacting. So for example, you're sitting in the chair, um, you know, you're putting force on the chair, the chair is putting force on you, um, the chair is also interacting with the floor uh, and the floor on the chair. 
And so any specific force in this scenario is going to be linked back to only two objects. So the force of you on the chair is between you, one of the objects, and the chair. So again, there can be many objects interacting, but in terms of individual force, each individual force, those are the result of two objects interacting.